no pit straw. Oh my god. I thought that was funny when I was standing over there. It didn't quite translate up here. Um, one more comedian for the night. Are you excited? That's right. And then raffle time, right? That's exciting. Come on. Where is she? Where's that little venomous bitch? Right here. There she is. Your final comedian of the night is also a singer-songwriter, which is yeah. super exciting. Um, she hates everyone and everything, <laughs> and I love her. Please put your hands together for Miss Erin Marks. That was awesome. Very dramatic. So glad I don't have to follow the raffle prizes because I know that you would all leave. And um, despite what she says about me being mean and being bitchy, you have toilet paper on your shoe. I couldn't let it go. I'm not going through that. You really do. Why is she turning around? That's not. It's still there. I'm trying to be helpful. I'm not being a dick. You have toilet paper on your shoe. All right. It's on the other shoe. Okay, you're good now. Sorry. Nice. I would want you to tell me. Okay. Is it because I have a microphone? Oh <laughs> Caleb, is that your friend? She fucking hate me now. Okay. Thanks for me. I'm sorry. So. Woo! I woke up this morning to a, a text message from my cousin in Connecticut that said, uh, I can't believe you only got eight inches. And I was like, A, how do you know? And B, what do you mean, only? <laughs> there was some snow, I guess. Big snowstorm. Um, I like cleaning off my car when it snows. Because maybe you guys should try this if you haven't yet. You just leave it running for like two hours. <laughs> and then drive as really fast as you can, like down the street, and then just slam on the brakes and it's clean. It's done. It's good. So, uh, my name is Erin. I can't... Thank you. Relax. No, okay, you don't have to. Uh, I can't tell you what a relief it is to be able to say that and not follow it up with, and I'm an alcoholic. This isn't that room, right? Yet. Uh, yeah, I quit drinking. Um, I've been sober for over two years now. That is the appropriate response to having quit drinking. Men's response usually is like, Ugh. I never in a million years thought that it would be a turnoff to tell a man that I don't drink anymore. I guess they worry they might actually have to be charming. He jokes on them though, because I'm really easy. But it's never the alcohol. And they say that uh, when you start drinking heavily, you stop maturing emotionally. So if and when you quit drinking, you have to go back and start all over again. I was like, that sounds exhausting. <laughs> you know, it was hard enough the first time. I'm, you know, going through life, I have to go back and start all over. It was being really tough the first time, being four. <laughs> it was getting really expensive to drink, you know. I mean, the cabs alone were breaking me to and from work every single day. <laughs> Off. So I recently quit smoking as well. Thank you. Because I wasn't enough of a miserable cunt. So how can I up my game? I'm going to quit smoking. Fuck you, Tim. Um, well, now, no, it's the first time in my life that I can actually say I don't have one single vice. <laughs> All right, well, I have one vice as long as I keep doing my kegels. <laughs> I'm doing them right now. <laughs> so, um, so happy that I get to hear everybody's uh, opinion on gun control because it's always really well thought out 
and um, I'm swarmed and never found on a bumper sticker or a beer cozy. <laughs> if your opinion does match that, I think it's safe to say that you can just keep it to yourself, but whatever, you know, you're going to hear about it, especially with everything that's going on right now. And I'm not, 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 not making a joke. It's nothing funny about the mall shootings and the school shootings at all. This, I'm not sick to make a joke about something like that. I only have one question. Why not a Kinko's? <laughs> I fucking hate that place. I'm sorry. I thought about this just the other day. I was like, why can't somebody come in here with a gun? <laughs> it seems like a victimless crime. I mean, it's not really going to take them, take any time away from how long it's taking while you're waiting for your order, because you usually get frustrated and fucking leave without it anyway. So I just think we're all going to be fine. Um, there's also the flu. All you have to do is maybe a little sniffle and clear your throat. And someone go, oh, it's going around. <laughs> I didn't get the flu or the flu shot this year. I was just getting a little dose of the flu. I didn't get either one of those things. Knock on wood. Um, but I did go to the doctor just to make sure everything was working properly. Um, just last week I went four times. <laughs> Because the first three times, he's like, Aaron, there's nothing wrong with you. You're fine. You're fine. And the fourth time I went, he's like, you know what, Aaron? There is something wrong with you. And I'm like, I'm glad that I came. <laughs> he said, you have mm, acute hypochondria. <laughs> and I think it's terminal. <laughs> he said he was losing patience. It made me look like really sad. <laughs> but I know this is a comedy show and I shouldn't be sorry. I can tell I'm having like a really low time in my life because no matter how many times I've watched Steel Magnolias, <laughs> I still <laughs> I still cry at the end. The really sad part near the end where Julia Roberts character cuts off her hair. <laughs> she looks so ugly. <laughs> like, why would you do that? <laughs> Terrible now. <laughs> Thank God there's medication, right? <laughs> Feeling well? Take a pill. Even people's pets now are on mood altering drugs. I overheard my aunt saying that her dog was on Prozac. But she qualified by saying, but it's okay, because I told the pharmacist that it was for the dog. And I was like, good, because that would have been embarrassing if you didn't. Good thing you qualified. So, um... If you ever want to feel like super duper white, you should go to a hip hop show. I went to one. Um, it's exhausting. They're extremely bossy. The second you walk through the door, they're telling you what to do. They're like, everybody scream. I'm like, woo! Like, make some noise. I'm like, I just did. They're like, put your hands in the air. I'm like, why? <laughs> I believe that putting one's hands in the air and waving them like you just don't care are completely conflicting ideals. Normally, I put my hands in the air to indicate that I do, in fact, care about something. <laughs> but I'm willing to adapt to this because my whole life, I've been looking for a way to let people know that I just don't care without using any unnecessary communication whatsoever. For example, you're on a date and the guy's telling you what he does for a living. You're like... You're at work, the boss is like, the deadline's Friday. <laughs> Your friend tells you that she had a miscarriage. <laughs> like most women, I have body issues. I feel like, uh, I feel bad enough about myself when I'm ordering Chinese food to be delivered to my home without them putting seven sets of chopsticks in the bag as if six other people are going to be eating this. Just me. 
And let me tell you something, all right, this is going to be a little embarrassing for me, but I have a little tip for you ladies. You never see the uh, diet pill commercials, the before and after? All right, here you go. You ready? Calm down. somebody's like family to them about somebody that's not in their family should be very careful who they talk in front of I was at a party with a girlfriend of mine and she was like that man over there he's like a father to me you want me to kick his ass <laughs> fuck is he doing here is this your birthday party how the fuck does he even know when your birthday is <laughs> go home dad <laughs> Got this. I went ice skating today. Right? I'm so athletic. It's like the second time in my life that I've gone ice skating, and you know, they don't call me Graceful Erin. I just think I was going to say something else. I they just don't. So everyone was talking about Facebook, joke stealers. Anyway, I'm on the Facebook as well. Ah, poke, poke. Um, yes. Um, all of my friends are on Facebook too, and good news, they're all running. They are all very athletic, they're all running every single day. Yes, bullshit. I don't want to offend anyone's fat feelings, but if your face is too big to fit in your profile pic, Out, you ran seven miles that morning. <laughs> Were you chasing a fry hopper truck? <laughs> oh, you put up a map. <laughs> Proof. All right. Bullshit. Second place in the line of bullshitters on Facebook are the stay-at-home moms. I'm sorry. <laughs> they were passing around the summy car the other day that said, "Yeah, I'm a stay-at-home mom. Ask me what I do all day. I dare you." <laughs> I don't need to ask you what you do all day. You're updating your fucking status every five minutes about how you're goddamn mother of the year. You're baking cookies. You're watching Finding Nemo. You're wiping snotty noses. Meanwhile, little Timmy's making out with the electrical outlet. And then little Timmy got electrocuted. Now you gotta rush him to the hospital. Did you know that you can check in at a hospital on Facebook? You can and you should because I'm on the edge of my fucking seat. What's happening with Timmy? OMG, what's happening with Timmy? I can't be bothered to call you right now. I don't know what's happening because they won't let me take my cell phone to the emergency room. Text me later. Okay. BRB. Christina likes this. Get home later, everything's calmed down a little bit. Back home with Timmy. Give us quite a scare. I'm having some of those cookies we baked earlier. I'm watching Find an Emo. Gotta go, Timmy's got a snotty nose. SMH. <laughs> I love the chat speak. <laughs> I dated a guy with a teenage daughter. <laughs> who taught me chat speak amongst many other great lessons in life. And I texted her one night, I said, what do you want for dinner? She wrote IDK. I said, what's IDK? She goes, I don't know. I said, well, then you shouldn't be using it. <laughs> Teenagers are so dumb. I found out the uh, hard way that um, my dad thinks that LOL stands for lots of love. When he sent me an email telling me that my cousin died. <laughs> So, speaking of my dad, 
Other people are broke, poor, whatever, yeah, times are tough, economy sucks, everybody's broke. I'm not, I'm doing great. Cause I'm a whore. I'm a musician. I'll I'll play anywhere, pretty much. I um I got a hundred bucks one time for singing the national anthem at the opening of a Walmart. Thank you very much. I have no shame. You think you have integrity? Fuck your integrity. I have boots, and boots cost money. You can't buy boots with integrity. And I have boots. Thank you. So I was accosted by a homeless man, speaking of being broke, last night. No. Um, came up, wanted to just chat. He was crazy, just running his fucking mouth. And you know, it's because of the economy, because of the weather, I guess they're all going to come out of nowhere. And I, you know, I felt bad for the guy. I gave him 20 bucks. My friend was like, what are you doing? I said, oh, he's like a father. Why? Who else? So I've been seeing this guy for a few weeks now, and it's at that um, awkward point where not enough time has passed, where it's okay to start calling him pet names like honey or baby, but way too much time has passed to ask him what his name is again. <laughs> hey, you. <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> the dating scene sucks. It's rough out there. I mean... Maybe I'm alone in this, but when I hear that they found an unidentified dead body on the news, I secretly hope it was like some guy that stood me up or blew me off a few weeks ago. I become really intrigued and I start asking all my friends about it. They think that I'm really concerned. They're like, Karen's all broken up about this. I'm like, was it a man or a woman? It was a man. How old was he? Mid 30s? How long was he out there? Oh, a few months? Never mind. It wasn't him. So, um, you ever try and convince somebody that you're not crazy? How does that work out for you? Hey, Mike, it's me. Um, I sent you a Facebook message a couple of days ago, and I didn't hear back. Um, I saw that you were on Facebook, you know, tagging and posting and whatever, and maybe you just didn't have the chance to check your inbox or whatever. You know, you'll get back to me when you can. It's no big deal. just want to see what you're up to, see what you're doing, see if you want to hang out, whatever. And so I, um, I sent you a text, and um, didn't you get my Facebook message? <laughs> it's okay, whatever. Call me when you want to. just want to see what's up, see what you're doing, see if you want to hang out, you know. And um, then I sent you another text message to see if you were getting my messages. And then I was like, well, if you didn't get the first one, then how would you have gotten the second one? So then I sent a third one saying, sorry for all the messages. And I was like, ah, stop doing that. So then I called you. And um, I was leaving you a message just saying, hey, what's going on? See what you're up to. See if you get my messages. See how you've been. See if you want to hang out. And we do. And um, at the end of the message, I realized that I forgot to leave my number. And you see sometimes on Facebook that people say, you know, I lost my phone or I got lost all my contacts. I got a new phone, you know, give me your number. So I called back to leave you my number and it rang once and then it went right to voicemail. So I know that you saw that I was calling and you hit decline and then I got pissed off and I started leaving this really angry message just saying, you know, um, you could just respond to one of my messages and then maybe I would stop sending the messages or whatever, you know, maybe you're busy, it's no big deal. And then I felt bad because, you know, maybe you had something else going on. Maybe you were on the phone with somebody else. Maybe you hit the button in your pocket. I don't know. It could have been a complete fucking accident. But I know that if you just call me back or wrote me back or did whatever, then we could get to the bottom of this. We could just hash it out, whatever. Spend a few minutes. I think we owe it to each other to just talk it out. Even if the end result is that we never talk again, which is clearly what you want. And for all you know, it could be what I want too, but you're not going to know if you don't call me back and just take a few fucking minutes to give me that time and let me prove to you that I'm not fucking crazy.
tonight. One, two, 